if my 1 to 13 brew ratio has the exact same extraction yield as my 1 to 14 brew ratio, does this mean all we need is 13 parts of water to fully extract the coffee? Well, this is something I've been very curious about. How extraction yield and TDS are actually related to each other. Now, in order for us to understand how they are actually correlated to each other, we need to understand what they are, represent. So essentially, TDS is the total dissolved solids inside of the coffee. And we test this with what's called the refractometer. Now with this, for people like me who really don't know too much about coffee, I think of TDS as how thick the coffee feels in my mouth. It's because each particle of water has an, a certain amount of total dissolved solids in it. The more dissolved solids you have, the heavier, the creamier it feels in your mouth. Now the extraction yield is calculated based on the TDS. It's actually, the formula for the extraction yield is the total amount of coffee brewed out divided by the amount of grams of coffee we used and then we multiply that by the TDS. And that tells us what percentage of coffee we've extracted. So if we add more water to it, then the TDS, actually, or then the extraction yield remains the same because the TDS would be dropping. With the definition of TDS and extraction yields, or EY, out of the way, I actually started to ask myself, what is the maximum of water we actually need to extract all the flavors? This means that if I were to do a 1 to 13 and a 1 to 14, if their EY is relatively close, then I would say that the 1 to 13 is all we need to extract all the flavors. Now this is of course given my brewing technique and my grind size and whatever variables there are. But to some degree, if I'm done pouring and any more water going into the dripper is not really extracting anything else, then why do I need so much water? Couldn't I actually add that in afterwards to create a brighter flavor? Or what is the effect of having more water going into the dripper? So these are little things that I've been trying to test out, but for today's video, I actually really wanted to just figure out with my technique, the revised single pour and a slow, slow pour, what is the exact maximum amount of water I need to finish brewing a coffee. So the test is quite simple. With last week's video, I actually showed how me pouring slower can actually extract a higher and more consistently at least. So for me, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using the exact same water, exact same beans, fill the kettle to the same amount of water, bring it to the same temperature, and then we're gonna be brewing the same coffee but with more water. And we're gonna find out when, at which time, or at what ratio, sorry, does the extraction yield barely change. Now I'm expecting a 1 to 14 to have slightly higher than a 1 to 13 and a 1 to 13 to have slightly higher extractions than a 1 to 12 for example. But there has to be a break point when there is going to be a big variance because we actually don't have enough water to pass through and absorb all the flavors. So my goal today is to really set out and figure that out. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be using 90 degree water. We're going to be doing the single pour technique. I will not be breaking the bed at the end because that might cause some extra variables. And then the coffee today is going to be a light to medium kind of coffee. Um, it has a little bit more gases than a lighter coffee. It's from Nicaragua. And yeah, let's get set up on to the side and then I will be showing you guys Now by no means am I a robot, so pouring to be exactly the same between the two brews is not ever going to be possible, but today's tests have really shown you guys how similar the extraction yield is going to be. Now a quick recap, the 1 to 14 
had a 20% extraction yield, whereas the 1 to 13 had like a 19.34, which means there actually wasn't much more being extracted with the extra 20 grams of water. Now, I've already done the test many times before, um, and the 1 to 12 actually dropped significantly to about an 18%, and the 1 to 15 is almost the exact same as a 1 to 14. The timing is a little bit longer, and it has almost like, it's maybe like 0.1% higher. Um, the 13 and the 14 are actually supposed to be a little bit closer, but I think the kettle was a little bit heavier on the 1 to 13, which allowed it, or which made me pour from a slightly higher point. I mean, all of these play a little bit into the factor, but uh, throughout the many tests and a larger sample size, you'll notice that the 1 to 13 and the 1 to 14 are almost the same in terms of extraction yield, which leads me to believe that this particular coffee is done extracting at the 1 to 13. So what does this all mean? It just, it just shows how much water is really necessary. And if I were to add a little bit of water to the 1 to 13, like another like 15, 20 grams to match the 1 to 14 one, I would actually have the exact same extraction yield, but a little bit lower, or actually about the same TDS as well. Um, so we're going to be able to almost recreate the same coffee with just a bypass. Um, now, this is really interesting because now we can just kind of play around with the other variables to see what kind of flavors or how much more we can push or subtract from the extraction and how different drippers really affect the different pours themselves. Um, so I've been playing around with it. I want to share a little bit more knowledge based on uh, when I test a little bit more with blooms and darker or lighter roasts. Um, I've noticed that from my experience so far um, that lighter roasts tend to have a higher extraction yield and darker roasts tend to have a lower extraction yield. Though I think it is because the first drips in the uh, darker roasts come out quite quick because the gases are always pushing it out which leads me to believe that if there's a possible way we should actually try to remove the beginning of the darker roast um, or we could be playing around with the blooms I'm, I'm not against the blooms I just don't do it as much personally um, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see what kind of methods or pouring techniques we can apply to really push those boundaries so, um, but yeah if you guys like this kind of content make sure to like it make sure to subscribe um, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one Bye.